now. Using his privilege to make positive changes. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The church beginning of the mandate. Get it on. And welcome to the show. Thanks for sharing. Jessica Keenan is here, comedian. Adam Yenzer here, comedian as well. Thanks for having me. I uh, watched Adam's uh, special, Dry Bar special Dry bar, last yep. night. Uh, very clever, very funny. Oh, thank you. And uh, lots of good jokes. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I'm doing a Dry Bar special coming up in a couple of months, and so I'm keen to watch others now oh, and see. go, what can you say? Yeah. How far can you push it, you know? That's why I, I like to walk that line, and it's hard because it, it tapes in Provo, Utah. And yeah. So the audience is almost all Mormons. It's just yes. you're, you're, they're performing for the Mormons. <laughs> yeah, but you got in some, some you know, slight some drug references, yeah. a little sex uh, in a there as bit, well. Yeah. It, I, I find it interesting. Have you, Jessica, have you ever had to do clean sets in your career? Not for dry bar, but I hear it's supposed to be, you have to be very, very clean. I mean, for them to actually. Yeah, I the crowd like are, you. The crowds are good though. The, are they? I, I think they're they're picky about the material because of their brand and their platform. But right. the audiences are great. They'll, they'll they're good laughers. They have fun. Oh, that's yeah, cool. and you had lots of really good jokes in there, which um, I appreciate because um, I don't know. I feel like sometimes comedians wax on with stories a little too much, and yeah. I, I, I kind of appreciate the joke part. I, I think it's hard too when you're working clean because I think they try to fill that time sometimes. Uh, like it's easy to be clean if you're just drawing out a story right. with, mm. without a whole lot of punchlines in it the whole time. But yeah, so. Uh, were you? I think you worked with Ellen for a long time. Yeah, right? I was a writer on the Ellen Show for ten years. Oh wow! I started in uh, oh, 2010 and worked there until 2021. Does uh, she seems to be experiencing a little <laughs> blowback or flack or something? I hadn't heard. What was <laughs> I, I, I? I want. I mean, I, I'd like to be super clear on this. Uh huh. I don't think you're supposed to be your employee's best friend. At all. Uh-huh. You're supposed to provide a fucking job and a paycheck and maybe some snacks. Yeah. Like maybe. And then after that, we're cool. And then this thing where it's like, well, the workplace, the workplace is where you go to work. Uh-huh. Right. And now I come from a completely different world because I come from job sites and construction where people would yell at you or threaten you with a pickaxe or something like that. So I didn't. And you whole, never complained that that was a toxic work environment? No. I had my foreman was named Mike Stramat. He was a <laughs> Vietnam vet. He was strung out on pain pills. And he, he, he literally tried to torture torture us like uh, that i mean he would make proclamations imagine this there's just me and three other poor white guys and two poor mexican guys and we're just poor white trash dudes trying to do whatever we can do for eight dollars an hour you know mm-hmm. and he digging ditches i i worked like a donkey i didn't there was no i'm staring at his phone or reading the funny page i was on my feet working just like a fucking mule like the entire time never complained never stopped there was no snack breaks there was no bathroom breaks there was no you drank water from the hose nothing (laughs) and that's all i was was a mule that worked and and he came in monday morning lined up all the other like-minded mules that were just poor white trash trying to get by and he just looked at all of us and he goes when are you quitting this week one of you is quitting this week. And and we're like, why? And he's like, yeah. I'm going to ride you so hard, so hard that I guarantee one of you is quitting. And if one of you doesn't quit, I'm not doing my job. And I'm like, we're already broken. <laughs> we're already poor people who come from a families that don't care, digging ditches mm-hmm. for nine dollars, seven dollars an hour, cleaning up asbestos laden f- floor tiles and stuff. Like we're broken, Mike. <laughs> you don't need to break us anymore. But he's like, I'm breaking you harder. And, and that's what our Ellen Writers meeting. Was. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say is that how she. Is. That? <laughs> so I don't. I don't mind a work environment that's about work. Yeah. 
But I, you probably shouldn't do what Mike did, which is <laughs> pull us out and start screaming at us for no yeah. reason. Well, that's the thing. I, I loved working at the LA show. It was tough at times, and and I get you know that I, I can't speak to everyone's experience there. It was extremely tough, and she could be hard on us at times. But I also got along with her and loved working there. It was I wouldn't have stayed there ten years if it wasn't. A tough place. And kind of what you said, what I've always said is every person who's ever worked any job, how did you feel about your boss? Probably some days they were good, and sometimes at a job you have a really a really tough, you know, backbreaker of a boss. Well, you know, I used to tell this to my ex-wife where she'd go, everyone over there loves me, but they, oh, they all hate you. And I'd go, <laughs> I'd go yeah, because you show up with food yeah. once yeah. a month and the drop it guy. off and yeah. then leave. Yeah. I'm right. there all day telling people yeah. what they're doing wrong. Yeah. So, yes, the person that brings the free Chipotle <laughs> once a month and doesn't correct anyone or tell anyone what to do and then leaves yeah right. yeah yeah they're gonna like you more than the yeah. person who tells them what to do all day and sort of says what you're doing wrong and which is kind of I would tell people all the time it's not really the boss's job to heap praise it's their job to go you missed the spot yeah which is or you could have done better with this I don't know but it, and also you're a good joke writer, and I don't feel like the righteous really have anything to fear. Yeah, I think I think if you there's and you can thrive in a tough environment too. I think. You know? Also, they kind of know the ones they need and the ones who can do That's it, true. and the ones who look. They're not at the end of the day. They're not dumb. If you're yeah. getting jokes into their monologue, they're not going to come Fire be super or, bitchy yeah. with yeah. your ass. Yeah. Now, Jessica, you're you're down the road, man. <laughs> you, uh, no. Who, yeah, what, talk about your career and your stand up. And you have twins, right? I do you have twins? I just found out you had twins. That's right. Yeah. I just found out myself, and That's they were 18. A, 18. Wow. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get them. Runner. Yours uh, must two. be They're only quite a bit two. younger. Yeah. Two. And what are they? They're uh, identical boys. Mm. Mm hmm. What do you have? I got boy girl. Boy girl. Okay. Twins that are nothing That's, alike at That's all. Nice. Yeah. Mine are two, two of the same. I mean, they fight all day long over sure. everything. No, yeah, they, I guess they would. They, because yeah, it's the same, they like the same stuff. You ever see what, like, uh, when an ostrich sees itself in the mirror? And just starts pecking at its own. <laughs> oh, like, that's like great! Bird, that is that. When a bird sees itself in a yeah. mirror, it uh, always attacks. That's how you but know. But you bird... would think that they would like, like, if you saw yourself in the mirror, wouldn't you? Like, I think that I'd want to be nice to my. I'd be like, oh, you look like me. But they don't do that. I. Uh, they are the ostrich. <laughs> I I tend to like people that act like me. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> what agree, I mean. Because like, then they agree with me. Yeah. Yeah, but br that's how you know birds are assholes. Because yeah. as soon as they, <laughs> they see, hate them, that's they funny. see themselves in the mirror and they go, "I gotta I attack like this you. thing yeah. that looks exactly like me." Is it competition? There's just there can only be one. Because with you, if you have identical boys, right. they already look alike, and then they see somebody else that looks like they're like. I mean, it could too many be. Of us. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and it's like, it, but it doesn't matter. It's like they have two of the same toy. They go for the same one. Like it's like you have two. What are we doing? Did um, and so. When I was young, you would see some identical twins, and they dressed them the same. Yeah, okay. So, it was a thing back then. Yeah, I, I like I, to dress them in same, same, but different. Like, same, like, a different colored shirt, but same shirt. But wouldn't, but as a society, we now frown upon that? <laughs> I mean, what they say is basically, like, you want them to have their own, own identity. They're two, you know? Like, when they get a little older, if they want to wear something, I'm not going to be like, no, you have to wear, well, I might, I don't know right. yet. <laughs> Because right. I really like dressing them. Alike. You do? I do. I love it. It's like, yeah. why wouldn't you? That's so weird to be like, they're, this, they're identical. Well, wait a minute. Why wouldn't you like dressing them because they're identical? Why wouldn't you dress them similar? Yeah. Like, why would you dress them completely different? I could make an argument for something that was identical to dress them completely different, although I'm but not, in, I'm not yeah. interested. Right. But I, 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 but you I will. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, a stoplight is red and green, but it's mm -hmm. not red in a slightly different version of red. It's like we mm. we want we need the opposite. So I I think when something is that close, maybe you go hard 
the other the way. way. Well, I don't know. I'm yeah. just fucking talking. I, don't <laughs> shit. I, I, I just, I don't see twins dressed in the same outfit anymore. Any, and yeah. I think as a society, we sort of went, that's some form of abuse. Yeah. I mean, I feel like when they, like I said, when they start to be like, I don't want to wear that. Right. Then, all right, what do you want to wear? Yeah. But for now, I'm like, this is so cute. And when you got boys, <laughs> so hopefully they won't care that much. Yeah. I don't trust we'll guys that care that much. About yeah. What I mean, they one wear. of them picks, like, likes the color blue a lot. So he'll, uh-huh. like, always, like, yell at me blue, which I tried to make him green, and that's mm-hmm. annoying to me. But, like, you know, mm. I, let, I let that happen. I'm a cool mom. And they're young. You could pit them <laughs> against each other. You could dress them identical and just give, like, one a Kamala shirt and one a Trump shirt. And just yeah, send them out in public. See, see, see if you yeah. can engineer their personalities yeah. to constantly rivalry. Yeah, that way everyone likes to me. Like, rivalry. Yeah, yeah I have both <laughs> sides of everything. Are you, are, are you doing clean comedy now, Adam? I always say I work mostly clean. Mm-hmm. I don't mind going. Like you said, it's on the dry bar special. I, I do stuff that's a little edgy. I just finished doing cruise ship gigs for the first time, oh. which mm-hmm. was interesting. That you have to be almost... Very Even close. cleaner than dry bar. They they want nothing controversial at all. Right. And, and the audiences are very old on the cruise ships. It was right. not it was not what I expected. I, I had never been on a cruise before, so I thought it would be like <laughs> young people. I, uh, so <laughs> here's the thing, I thought a cruise would be full of like young, like topless girls like Rose and Titanic. <laughs> and instead it's like dying old ladies like Rose and Titanic. I love that you go <laughs> there like a, trying to like be like, Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get some. <laughs> like, oh never But mind. um yeah, so I always I always say I work mostly clean and for Beginning comics, I always say, I think it helps to try to write clean. Even if you're going to do dirty material eventually, I think it kind of Just makes you write it. harder and, and structure it's, the jokes a little better. Yeah. And, and I don't dislike dirty comedy. There's lots of dirty comics that I love. It's mm-hmm. more of a challenge to yeah. construct a joke that you could say on primetime yeah. television. But then it, it's fun to curse sometimes also. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I agree. Um and also the stand-up schedule or the performing schedule on a cruise ship is pretty awesome, right? Yeah. It's like uh, it's like a paid vacation, you know. Yes. You're, you're there with 90-year-olds, but it's you are on a ship for two weeks, and you maybe do two nights of shows. And oh, the wow. rest of the time, you're, like, sitting by the pool Hanging and eating out. at the buffet. And I learned this schedule many, many years ago with a dear departed friend of mine who was a juggler named Philip Welford, and I was good friends. And I was... I was still a carpenter, and he used to kind of tell me his schedule as a, as a working juggler comedian. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, you know, when you hear things, when you see things through the lens of I'm making $11 an hour, and I hope one day to make $13 an hour, but this job sucks, and I got to drive a truck, and I got to be in Simi Valley, and I'm <laughs> framing a house, and it's 107 yeah. degrees and stuff. When... The juggler then tells you his schedule. It's 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 mind numbing. Like he would go, "Oh, I I open for Andy Williams." And I'd go, "How much time do you do?" And he'd go, eh, "20 minutes." Yeah. Hey. Twenty minutes. What? Yeah. Yep. That's, yeah. But then for the rest, you have to then go help Andy clean up or something after the show. No, just I do. That's I it. work. <laughs> yeah. So you work twenty minutes a day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I work nine hours a yeah. day, but you work twenty <laughs> minutes a day. Yeah. And how much you get paid? I get six thousand a week. Yeah, <laughs> six thousand a week. Yeah, six yeah. thousand. I make four hundred a week on a fifty-hour week at a thirteen bucks. A, yeah, you get six thousand. Do- and like my head, and when he told me the cruise ship, yeah, I was like, so how long are you gone? So about nine days. I go, well, <laughs> and how much work? How often you got to work every night? And it's, no, two shows. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> two shows a night, right? No, just two shows. I could, well, then what, what, oh, what for else? the rest? Are you yeah. helping, like, shovel coal into a furnace or mm-hmm. swab the deck or something? No, I'm a first class passenger. Yeah. I go, and they pay you? Yeah. They pay you? It's like, <laughs> yeah. I just, you I just start juggling. Yeah. Ra- I, try <laughs> I have to learn this I now. To, I picked yeah. up three oranges while I was talking right. to Right. Yeah. And I was like, wow, the cruise ship schedule is nuts. I, also, why? They, they're paying you. Mm-hmm. Do a show every night, bitch. That's what I don't understand at all. You're there. You might, it feels like you might as well be performing. But, but they, there's they only so t- many people and they have, on the cruise, though. There's only right? so many people there, so they'll come to different shows. And they usually right. have a few different acts. They'll have you know a band and then maybe a magician or you Juggler, know, something yeah. else happening each night. Yeah, and, and it's paid and you're getting free food and Two to weeks travel. Yeah. and you do two shows. Yeah. Oh, That's see, nice. Now you sound like Philip the Juggler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
But it is weird. It, it's it's weird when you try to explain things to poor people. Oh, yeah. Well, and even <laughs> that, other stand-up comedians, because I feel like even in stand-up, the pay is so uneven. Like, if I'm doing a headlining set at a club and I'm doing an hour – for, you know, three shows over a weekend or four shows over a weekend, sometimes that'll pay less than doing, like you said, like a half an hour twice a week on a cruise right. ship. And then, you know, you get corporate gigs, which the audience is usually not as good, but they pay a lot better. And it seems like there's no correlation with the amount of work that you're doing and there the isn't. amount of the no. pay. No, but it, it's weird that I could wrap my mind as a, as, a, as a carpenter who made 12 bucks an hour. Like, I could wrap my mind around... Going to a club, selling out a club, getting paid for the, going to a club, but somehow the cruise ship yeah. blew your mind. Yeah, kind of blew my mind. But they're also like nobody's talking about like the road to get to that gig. Oh yeah. He, so he, it's he, like yeah. you're, yeah, you're listening that. to somebody like I can just like he probably didn't make any money until that cruise ship. Yeah. So it's like yeah, that's <laughs> no. He that's has, like it doesn't make it like you're thinking a, like you're like oh my god I'll quit right now. It's like all right good luck and like. He was a street performer in San Francisco for a lot of years. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, of course. Of course. He had to learn right. to juggle and do his whole act and yeah. everything else. Um, but I do remember, so, like, explaining to poor regular people about <laughs> stuff. And uh, I remember I had a guy who was an old biker, kind of rock and roll guy. He was a carpenter, and he worked for me for a million years. And his name was Gary. And I was you know, doing TV shows and making tons of money and doing tons of stuff. And he he understood that I had lived in a big house and I drove cars and I had race cars and I paid him and he knew I had money and stuff. But one day he was looking at a motorcycle. It was like a Harley that was done up by Mike's Hard Lemonade. And it was probably about uh, 13 grand worth of Harley. And uh, he was like looking at us. He was an old biker. He's like, oh man, sweet. You know, where'd you get that or something? I said, <laughs> Mike's Hard Lemonade gave it to me. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't. and now it's it's thirteen grand worth of stuff. But I could make fifty grand an episode during the Man mm, Show, you know. Yeah. But that didn't, didn't really work for him. But what did right. work is the a free, free motorcycle. Right. That's like, what got him mind going. Mind blown <laughs> yeah. from Gary because it was something he he could. Tangible, yeah, to him, and that he you know? loved, and wanted, that he, that he, yeah, he coveted it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do your kids, uh, the twins, are they displaying yeah. uh, other than just aggression? Are they explain? Are they expressing a sense of humor? Oh yeah, qualities? They're, they're so silly, which. I didn't want, I wanted, like, my husband's real, like, chill, and just, like, he's, like, more shy, and I was like, please let me get two of those, and I got two me's, and they just two want years. so much attention. They love attention. Like, everywhere we go, they they actively are looking for eye contact with, like, strangers, and it gets mm. weird, because, like, not a lot of people like kids, and <laughs> they, I didn't know, I didn't realize, like, how many until I had kids. I'm like, oh, People hate kids. Like, I mean, sometimes well, they. Well, there's a lot to pretend. There's like women who really pretend to like kids. You a think lot. they pretend? I just don't see how they can be that into other people's kids. <laughs> Nurturing and loving. Yeah. yeah. With all your compliments. Uh, it's a lot of men, too, like they, that hate kids, that, that yeah. they like try to really. I'm like, stop. It's so, it's so weird because I, they don't stop. Like they just keep, like, and they'll start to make noise, like, eh. And I'm like, leave they're, them alone. They're, like, leave the, like. They're savaging eye contact with Bill Maher. Yeah, basically. that's what it feels like. It's so uncomfortable. <laughs> Bill Maher hates kids so much. That's hilarious. He hates kids. I, I was uh, at Seth MacFarlane's Christmas party, and I was, like, talking to Bill Maher. I guess my kids were eight or something. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you got those twins, huh? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, man. And I go, I don't know, Bill. I, I kind of like them. You know? And he goes, come on. <laughs> I go, I... Go, I you know, listen. If we were if we were like living in a one bedroom apartment in Van Nuys and they were keeping me up all night and crying, you might. They feel lived different. in a different part of my house. They had uh -huh. a fucking full time nanny. They had a night <laughs> you barely nurse. Saw I didn't them. have to do shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I threw money at the problem. So uh, when I hung out with them, it was yeah. fun time. You know, yeah. I wasn't changing diapers and getting and still up. Still, you kind of liked them. Yeah, <laughs> they were all right. You know. Yeah. And. uh 
I was kind of telling Bill, like, eh, they're fun. You know, I'm having fun uh, with them. You know, I was like, okay, you, you, don't <laughs> have to lie. Foolish, yeah. you don't have to lie to me. You're amongst friends. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't like kids. I think I'm one of those guys, like, I pretend to like kids, but I haven't had them myself yet. So it's easy to like kids, I think, when they're you running pretend, around. You pretend, like, and for who, though? Just for the... I think because I, cause I do want kids, and I do enjoy kids. I think they're fun. Yeah. You know, when other people have them, I think it's fun <laughs> watching them play and, yeah. and run around. But I've never had the responsibility of taking care of it and dealing with the you know, the stress of it also. Right. Adam, do yeah. you ever get that you sound like Jeff Dunham? I have never gotten that before, do I? Which which one of the puppets do I sound like? Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kind of hearing it now. You really? sound... It, it, I didn't hear that before. I, I don't know where Jeff Dunham's from. Uh-huh. Maybe I the Midwest know somewhere. I don't know where you're from. I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania. That's where Jeff... Oh, I can't... <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> no, <that's> you don't. <laughs> Where's Jeff? What part of Allentown did uh, Jeff go to high school at? I am telling you, if you play conversational Jeff Dunham... I'm going to have to listen to this. We, 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 I can hear it now. We, we now can, that you said it, I hear it. We can summon it because he's been on the show enough that we could probably find a Jeff Dunham clip. It's my only gift is hearing... <laughs> people and going, you sound like Jeff Dunham. Yeah. And I don't even do others than Jeff Dunham. I really? just, just do Jeff Dunham. Hey, that's the only one. Uh, he Jessica, has so many voices. So you, it's... <laughs> You're doing uh, the Tonight Show, you're doing Fallon yeah. coming up. Yes. How's I'm the not... vetting yes. for that? Um, I mean, I have known the booker for years, so I kind of gave up. You know, I was like, I, he, he hasn't picked me. But mm-hmm. I kind of reconnected with him, um, and he was like, just send me your tape. And then, oh, they don't come out and see the set anymore. I guess, right? He did see me perform. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. So, mm-hmm. and then I just sent him a set that I thought was, you know, met all the criteria and all that. And how much uh, tweaking? I've never done stand up on the, those shows. I've done panel stuff, but I've never done stand up. But yeah. I always hear that they have a lot of notes on content. Yeah, so I'm still early in the process. Um, He hasn't, they approved all of it, and I sent seven minutes, but I have Mm -hmm. to cut it to five. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of figuring that out um, in the next, you know, couple weeks. I have to just really dial it into five and make sure I... And will you get up on stage and work it out? I've been doing that, yeah, and it's painful. It is painful because it's such a... um, it's such a robotic, you know, it's, it's, you can't just be yourself. And I'm trying to be a professional, like, I'm just going to do this five. And the audience doesn't know that. So yes, it just yes. sounds so no, just I know fake it's, and not, you know. Mm-hmm. No, I know exactly. Tough. I know exactly what you're saying. Jeff Dunham's from Dallas, by the way. <laughs> oh, I, I knew it. Uh, <laughs> but, um, Nailed it. Yeah. No, I, I know what you're saying yeah. because I'm trying to get my dry bar set together and so i'm like i'm gonna work on my dry bar set and i'm at some rowdy ass bar Mm -hmm. in huntington beach sunday night people are there drunk and ready to party and stuff and i you could tell them like you could go hey listen Mm -hmm. or you could just go in with your your shit your late night set and not late night tv but just late night club set and just go fuck it because these people are here and they want to laugh but even like i have been having people intro me with it and it's still i mean it's an audience so it's like they still are like all right like Loosen up, you know. <laughs> and it sucks because you want to run that material, but right. it's something if there's you know anything a, going a on in the room, or even just something that yeah. doesn't feel right for that crowd, you want to go off on. Oh, I could of do this course. and it will work here, be but like then I'm not real, running the set anymore. A real person, yeah. Yeah, we got uh, Jeff Dunham from this show. Let me hear this. <laughs> oh, Dawson wasn't right. <laughs> That's nuts. That He's, dude, I don't know how he makes any money. Can you imagine what the cost is? And he has like 40 people. I got 12 crew guys. He has like 50. <laughs> He's got like eight <laughs> semi trucks. Three of them are just filled with merch. Like, yeah. it's and, and he's got he's nuts. got he's got people out the wazoo and and how many ever many opening acts and it's like what's going on? It's just I don't have an opening act. I was so cheap. I'm like forget it. I'll be my own opening act. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's talking about Gabriel Glaces, by the way. But oh, okay. uh, there you go. I, I see the there similar cadence. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you think Adam? This is going to be an interesting question. You're very normal looking and uh, appearing, and you're almost Dunham esque in your affect. Uh, does that hurt in the, in this artistic realm? Of guys with tattoos and berets, and everyone's looking for some sort of 
uh, edge. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, you know, I, I think I think when you have a, an odd look or uh, something more extreme, it sets you apart as this character as soon as you step on stage, and it lets people kind of pin you down if they're trying to cast a certain type or if they want a certain role. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I would say looking like a normal guy has held me back or, or affected anything. That well, what it's I think not is, answerable. Yeah. I guess is the the question. But well, well what I what I think is more. I, I feel like I had a pretty normal upbringing, and I hear mm-hmm. a lot of comedians that had either these dark or difficult or tragic pasts, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I never. And, and I feel it's like it's like a guilt almost sometimes, where it's like, oh, I I didn't go through that. I had a pretty a pretty yeah, normal upbringing, and then yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you don't have those dark experiences to, it didn't to feel, draw it from. It didn't feel like it was trauma. The trauma came after I got into the comedy industry. <laughs> right. Say. With Ellen. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Tell so us. You, no. <laughs> the... <laughs> ah, listen, uh, look, I, look I, okay, I'm with you and that you hung around with Ellen for 10 years. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I do have people... Uh, uh, there's a theme women tell me Everyone thinks you're an asshole. Uh-huh. And then I go, how come no one ever quits? Uh-huh. And they go, they're too scared. And I go, no, no. When, when people think you're an asshole, then they, they stop. They don't work for you yeah. for 15 years. They, they well, quit. Well, unless you pay them well. Yeah, but I don't pay them. That. <laughs> I, don't pay them I don't do that good either. <laughs> I'm an asshole and I'm cheap. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you hang around for ten years, if you have ability and you have ability, and yeah. people in the modern era have choices, right? They yeah. can go. They can go places. Then you've sort of answered your same. You've answered your own question, which is how bad could Ellen be if you're there for a decade? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but so and, many people stay in abusive relationships. <laughs> yeah, they're and fat they're... and ugly. <laughs> Are you talking about the women? <laughs> no, I see. I reject that. Uh, well, first off, you you can say people stay in abusive relationships, yeah. um, but what percentage of people stay in abusive relationship at the workplace, especially if you have options? Like what? What yeah, percentage the options of options is a big thing too. Yeah, if they don't have options, then well, everyone has options because you can just not go. Like when they right. go, why should people work at McDonald's for slave wages? I'm like, you have an option to not, to not wor- yeah. work at McDonald's. Yeah, you would like I worked at McDonald's for three bucks an hour for a summer when I was 16, but then. Mm. I don't work there now yeah. because I had I made options for myself. So it's like this thing of like, you got to be there for slave wage. You don't have to be anywhere. You don't yeah. have to work at McDonald's and you don't have to work with Ellen yeah. if you don't want to. People do that theme of, well, but what are you going to do? It's like, uh, go somewhere something else. Something else. Do something else. Yeah. I, I had the same experience. I worked for Burger King for a summer in uh, college. It was the only job I ever quit. I was just like, I don't, I don't like it here, and I'm, I'm gonna leave. I, I didn't want to be there anymore. Yes, because it's uh, horrible. Yeah. Did you work I, I the grill? I, I worked the grill and the register. I think you're kind of a, you do everything at Burger King. <laughs> I never made it to the register. Really? <laughs> only the griddle. Uh huh. Only the grill, which I, I, I look, I kind of look back on this period. <laughs> and I go, they put the talkative, friendly, yeah. nice people who they thought could work a cash register up there. And then they took the grunts and they put them in the back. Yeah. And I stood over the grill. And all I did was the grill and sweeps and mops yeah. of the dining area. A very quiet, silent repetitive job but i thought it's weird that i'm a comedian now but i mm-hmm. on yeah. every job like sometimes when you talk to comedians they'll go like when you talk to adam ray he'll go i worked at universal studios i was wolverine yeah, or yeah. I, it I, makes I, sense yeah i worked yeah. The, i worked the tram i was the creative director i would tell people where we're that that was the jaws the shark or the earthquake or whatever like yeah oh and now you're a comedian like right. that makes sense yeah Pushing a mop in silence and standing <laughs> over a griddle, potential. They, yeah. my <laughs> You're comedic still potential yeah. was not recognized. <laughs> but had the, they seen it, you might still be there, killing it. 
getting paid slave yeah, labor. Yeah, just yeah. like, oh, crushing everybody that comes my, up. My memory from Burger King, I remember I worked there for three weeks. I'd started, I worked there for three weeks. And in that three weeks, I got, they'd always do like an employee of the month thing. Mm-hmm. And I got employee of the month after being there for three weeks. Oh, wow. Really? And I thanked my, like the head boss, the manager. I remember I came out, I go, oh, thank you. And he goes, he very gruffly, he goes, I didn't vote for you. Because apparently he all it. the managers, <laughs> apparently all the managers vote, and oh. he, he was very like stern, like I didn't vote for you. I never. And liked then I you. was there a couple more months. This was while I was in college, and then I got an internship. My my first like uh, stepping stone into the um, comedy industry. I got an internship for Conan O'Brien's show back when it was in New York, mm-hmm. and I had to start in like two two weeks or something. And I told my boss at Burger King, I was like, hey, I got this internship. I got to leave. And he goes, you're going to finish out the schedule, right? And I was like, no, I'm not going to finish out the program. I'm going to New York and I'm not coming back to Burger King. (laughs) I don't get – let's explore extra talk that's unnecessary and oftentimes creepy and hurtful Uh that people do. Like, I didn't vote for you. Like, he didn't have to – Like, there's no – Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Why even say that? There's no need. No need. I I had this (laughs) – That's fine. I I had this just (laughs) notion because, you know, once in a while you're just driving and the right song comes on or something. But you you flash back on bizarre conversations you've had with people that were, like, wildly unnecessary. When I moved – I moved when when my wife and myself and – Right about the time the kids were born or something, moved into a big house in the Hollywood Hills, and I had this single neighbor. I was like an X-ray tech or something, possibly gay, but just anyway, nice enough, whatever. And, and like at some point, I sort of ran into him in the street, like, "Hey, neighbor, we just moved in," and he goes. Uh, yeah, he goes, you should get some curtains up uh, upstairs there in the bedroom there because, uh, you know, it's kind of wide open. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, okay. I can put some curtains up. His house was like above yeah. mine, you know. And he goes, he goes, yeah, but you got to get some curtains because uh, I, I can see everything. And then he paused and he goes, I mean everything. And I'm like, why, why are you even saying that? Just say – or say nothing or yeah. enjoy the show. Or yeah. he I could get curtains that. and close them. <laughs> or he could not peer out yeah. of his curtainless window at my curtainless window. But he's like, I mean everything. Yeah. Like, I'm sort of thinking, like, what is what going on? What did you see? What yeah. did you see? I like, picture him with do? one of those old timey telescopes next yeah. to the window. He's just peering through every like day. Like the ghost in Mrs. Muir. Yeah. It's, a, it's a deep cut <laughs> reference. But the, the point is, it's like, why add? Right. Mm. Or why say anything? And then. Uh, I hearken back on my first girlfriend, Esther, <laughs> in junior <laughs> high, and she called to inform me that she had picked me over my good-looking buddy, Chris, <laughs> and she goes, oh. Adam, I want you to know that I would like to like go steady with you over Chris, and I was like, oh, thanks, and then she paused, and she goes, all my friends think I'm nuts. <laughs> Oh, that's why, great. Why, why did you say why that? Why, Ed? Why couldn't I just that's beat so out great. Chris? Yeah. But, like, what did she tell Chris? You know? <laughs> I don't know like, what. I'm so, I, I feel bad for you because that's so mean. But then also, like, what did she say to him? Like, he's probably still. What's with the extra conversation? That's I, what I'm I saying. Love that. Why did yeah, Why did no your need. shift manager need you yeah. to know that yeah. he did not cast a vote for you? Yeah. yeah. I, I, it's, it's just, it feels like he wants to, they Make just sure. want to put you down a little bit or something. <laughs> my, uh, my manager is a big black dude named Ken, who was like scary and could manipulate his mustache to let you know his thoughts. You know what I mean? Like he'd be like, mm, mm, I don't know about this dude. And uh, he had a big sign up that said, time to lean, time to clean, which meant there is no downtime. Like, I don't care. If there's not a lunch rush, you better get busy cleaning. And uh, he he reached into the freezer, and he had these big bear claw hands, and he picked up like six patties with each hand and went pap, 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 smack, you know, on the griddle. And it's like, that's how you do it. And I was like, I can't hold that many frozen patties at once. And he was trying to teach me how to uh, mop correctly because I didn't know how to mop. But the problem was... And I don't know what they had at the Burger King over there in uh-huh. uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area where you grew up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they had a rule which was no tennis shoes. Oh, wow. okay. And so what they would say is your shoes need to be leather-soled. That's how they 
I think we had that also. Worked yeah. it out. Like, 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 you had to look sharp <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> in your polyester. Where no one can gee see. with your paper yeah. hat on, looking like a total loser. But you had to have the right shoes, right? <laughs> yeah. So all I, I did not have any shoes, and I didn't really have dress shoes or anything. I had the shoes that I wore w- for my ninth grade graduation. Mm-hmm. But this is now a year and a half later. My foot has grown a size. <laughs> but they were leather on the bottom, but they were just like dress shoes that I wore <laughs> <Yeah>. once. <laughs> and so I didn't know how to mop, so I was mopping with the mop in front of me. Not backpedaling, but doing in front of me. Then when my leather-soled smooth shoes would hit the wet floor, I was sliding all over the place and holding the mop handle, trying to hold myself up, and Ken was just staring at me, moving his mustache around. And I was like, this sucks, and I don't want to be here. Yeah. I also like the idea of a customer walking into a McDonald's or Burger King and just seeing the employee's shoes. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. we're going to a nicer yeah. McDonald's. Sorry, are, Mr. Keds. I yes. don't, moving on. The one down the street on. has leather sold shoes. That's right. Yeah. This guy's wearing Vans. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to let him give me fries. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's it. You ever work fast food? I never worked fast food. Ugh. Everybody, everyone should work fast food like. Everyone in Israel has to sign up for the army for two years. You know, mm. it's just do it. It'll give you perspective a little yeah. bit. A, you'll you'll never complain about whatever other job. You're not going to complain yeah. about working yeah. for Ellen if you work for the king. Yeah. It's 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 <laughs> you you work fast food for six months and you go. I get That's it. it. Yeah. There I are mean, shit jobs at a out there. Swap meat selling chicharrones. So I think it's like similar. Chicharrones. Uh huh. Oh, the yeah. Mexican. What yeah. is that? Can't it's like, like a donut or something? No. What it's is like it? a pork rind. Oh, those. Oh, okay. And then yes. they put like hot sauce and like oh, yeah. uh, lemon juice on it. Yeah. But there was only one item, so that was like very easy. That's a weird job. It's very weird. How'd you get that job? Um, my one of my friends, uh, her stepdad owned the swap meet. So he owned the little. Were you like the Pomona stands. swap meet, or no? You're it was out in here? Uh, Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, that's where I grew up. Oh, Jeff Dunham from Vegas. <laughs> Did you know that? Oh, you're from Vegas. <laughs> yeah. He, so he, Adam I feel Dunham. like he wound up in Vegas. He started in Dallas. <laughs> that was such a Dunham take. <laughs> <laughs> so you sell the chicharrones. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um, no, uh, let's see. You didn't You didn't serve any horchata or anything to wash no, it that down? No, was it. It was just that stand. Oh man, did yeah. you did you partake? Did you nibble on the chicho yeah, on this? So good. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just pork like fried. skin. Well, and the ones they make are like it's almost like a chip. I don't even think there's any pork in those ones. I think it's just like fried flat. It's like a yeah round little. It sounds gross, but so does calamari. But so does yeah. It's, it's and it's a, good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, but right from Burger King to interning over at, at Conan? Conan, when, yeah, back when he had the late night show. That's, in that's a really that's big a nice oh. move. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. That? that was that was like the thing that I, I, in my career, there was like a big break. It was getting that internship. Although first, so when I was in college, I went to uh, Penn State and I got, uh, I, was, I was studying film and video production. I wanted to get into comedy writing. And my junior semester, I applied to all these internships in New York. I wanted to get like SNL or Conan or Letterman. I sent out everything. Didn't hear back from anything except the Maury Povich show. Oh. So I wound up interning at the Maury Povich show for a semester. So yeah. you're in uh, Happy Valley. And, uh, yeah, yep. I was in Happy Valley. Dunham's from that. <laughs> Did you know that? He's from the Nittany uh, Mountain yeah. range there. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I ran into him a few times. So you worked out, at Maury Povich? I like... did. And we had to take phone calls. Our job as interns, at the end of every episode, they'd run that thing where it's like, are you not sure which of these three men is your baby daddy? Uh-huh. Or does your mom dress too sexy? Yeah. Uh-huh. Call this number. And we'd sit at a panel of phones and just have to answer the phones. And there from was all so the many people calls. calling in, telling us uh, about uh, you know how many men were possibly the baby's daddy. And you'd always have to pull more out of them. You'd always be, they'd always be like, yeah, I'm sure one of these two men is my baby's daddy. <laughs> and then you have to be like, is there anyone else it could possibly be? And then there'd oh, be a yeah. long pause, and they'd be like, well, there's this one other guy. Yeah, oh, those yeah. shows would keep bringing out <laughs> yeah. men, and you were like, I don't understand how this is possible. Yep. But then uh, after I had that on my resume, then then I applied to all the other internships again the following year and got in at Conan O'Brien, which was just an amazing place to work. I don't. 
uh, I'm a fan of Conan O'Brien, but I don't think he likes me. Oh, you did the show a few times, though, right? I did. I did do the show, um, but I don't think he likes me. I I went on the show once. Um, let's see. I went on the show once, and uh, I sort of got into it with the audience a little and started mixing it up a little bit. And I don't think Conan appreciated it. <laughs> it sort of, I could, it's never good when the guy's hosting the show when you see him slide his chair away from you, oh, no. like because those chairs have wheels on them, you yeah. know, yeah. and people do the eh, like Conan would track. do that move. So, yeah, sometimes it was start, a joke, and sometimes it was a real distance. I, I think it was motivated yeah. in this case. He, I could see his oh, chair no. getting further from me as I was yelling, calling this audience <laughs> member a lesbian, you know. <laughs> and I like want to see the full what you actually did. Like the now, did you do that on Ellen? Did you call anyone a lesbian? No. Ellen, Ellen, I got. Uh, yeah, Ellen, I, I was told not to bring up meat oh. um, uh, quite a few times meat. by scared people uh -huh. in the green room. So, uh, but Conan. So, what happened with Conan is I don't think he appreciated it. And then, uh, but I wouldn't call it a bad appearance. You know, uh -huh. it was like a little bit rowdy, kind of fun. And then um, later on, this is a funny one. But right after. Um, 9-11, uh, Jimmy and I were in, in New York for the Hugh Hefner Comedy Central roast, which took place like two or three weeks after 9-11. And um, there, were, there weren't people flying into New York, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. logically, to do people's shows. So these, these shows were having a difficult time booking people right after 9-11, yeah. obviously. And then Jimmy and I were both in town for this roast. And so they're like, oh, we're, Jimmy's in town or we're in town. And then Jimmy got the call from Conan and said, uh, hey, how about you? Do, like, you're in town. Could you do Conan tonight or tomorrow night or whenever it was? And Jim, I think I remember where Jimmy and I were. We we're like walking through Manhattan or something. And he was on a cell phone. And he said to him, he goes, he looked at me and he goes, uh, yeah, I'll, he talks to Conan. He goes, "I'll do it if Adam, if we do it, me and Adam do it together, no problem." And then they told him they don't do teams or they don't do pairs. And I was like, "Well, that's fascinating because I have done the show with Doctor Drew, <laughs> oh, so no. I'm the only person that." fucking argument doesn't work with there's me and dr drew oh yeah how many people have two partners how many oh like you gosh. that is a, a lie that you think would work flawlessly right yeah, you just go to the guy this hey one, time. This one yeah. guy who has oh. done your show with his other partner mm. so i was like oh well, that's bullshit yeah <laughs> uh but i don't think jimmy ended up doing the show i don't even know whatever happened to no jimmy. i never heard what of that guy that again guy? I, know. Just, I think he's in Tampa. I never saw him on Late Night again. <laughs> he's doing either a drive time or afternoons in Tampa. I remember <laughs> that. That I remember. He, he hits me up for money every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, the last time I was just like, look, I'll give you the money and you don't have to pay it back, but you can never ask for money again, Jimmy. <laughs> and that, that'll be That's the payback. Yeah. yeah. So it's sad. Hopefully you he'll know. find something to do. He'll, he'll work he's his way back a, up. You know, he's a radio guy. He's done right. <laughs> you know, 40 octaves, that means someone's not doing it. And you know, Jimmy's Jimmy. That makes it better, yeah. When you say their name three times, Jimmy, he's Jimmy. <laughs> he's going to do what Jimmy's going to But if someone keeps saying your name and say, yeah. saying, you know, Adam's Adam. Adam's going to do good. what Adam's yeah. going to do. That means yeah. you're a total fucking asshole. Yeah. It's That's almost like saying too much, but it's not. It's not. It's almost like the... Uh, I have said too much information. many, many times you watch those celebrity interviews and when you see the interview, they had to work on set with somebody for like five months. Right. And you know they hate some of those blowhard celebrities mm -hmm. they have to deal with, right? And then they sit down and then the movie's wrapped 
and then they have to go do all the publicity. And then the, whoever's asking the question is always going to say, what was it like working yeah. with Stephen Baldwin? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. and, and you can always, I'm telling you the code is they'll go right down the line. They'll go, oh, Meryl Streep, so, you know, so, <laughs> what a wonderful, and so, so generous, so generous. It's just, yeah. and fun. Yeah. People don't know how fun she is. She's got a wild sense of humor. And then they'll go, and what about Alec Baldwin? Alex, Alex, you know, yeah. it's kinda, yeah. if they say that name twice, it's over. They it's fucking the same hate as that. like the equivalent of when you say someone's nice. Yeah. I think that's the word. Like if someone says, oh, I went out on a date with this guy and you're like, oh, how was it? And he's, he was nice. That's the, um, it's the yeah. worst thing you can say about anybody. We hear cute personality. That means fat. It's a kiss <laughs> yeah. of death. Yeah, it's a but, kiss of yeah, death. Yeah, nice is just like. Yeah. Yeah. The death. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think I'd want to be thought of as nice. No. But you know what he I would? Nice. Here yeah. what I would like. I tell people all the time, they don't like it, but I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> I would much rather be thought of as fair than nice. I know a lot of horrible people that act nice is a mm-hmm. compensation for being super shitty and unfair. Yeah. I'd much rather have a fair neighbor than a nice neighbor. I'd rather have a fair roommate than a nice roommate. I want fair. Yeah. Fair will make you de facto nice through your actions. Yeah. And, and nice people, they're either hiding something or they're pushovers, I feel like. It's one of those yeah. two things, yeah. Like Ellen dancing at the beginning <laughs> of the show. I was wondering when this conversation yeah. was going to circle back. It was all in that area of Ellen that I knew it was going to come back there again. Did you ever see when her I, dance off the stage? Uh, I never, I don't, what do you mean, just dance and, dance up and no. go away? Just, I'm done with this and dance all the and way. And did she dance when she, when the show, when the cameras weren't hot? Uh, surprisingly, every now and then she did during really? rehearsal, during rehearsal sometimes oh, and, uh, and stuff. She would, she wouldn't always, but yeah, mm-hmm. there was, it, it's funny because when I first started working there, all of the questions I would always get was, is Ellen really that nice? And does she dance all the time? And then by the time I left, the questions were always, is Ellen really that mean? Oh, <laughs> oh well, up, you know. It I, came full circle. And does she dance? Know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm going to let Joe find this, but there is a... Uh, a trailblazer in the what I'm pushing out to the audience versus what lives inside of me. Mm -hmm. People forget the first iteration of Rosie O'Donnell. People forget her daytime TV show where she was like, I love Tom Cruise. I love the cutie patootie chump club. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, you wouldn't even fucking recognize that. Uh, I mean, she was, yeah. I know a guy who worked for her, and it's like, way back in the day, he's like, he's, she fires somebody every single day. She's the worst person in the world. And I was like, what are you talking about? She loves Tom Cruise and David <laughs> Cassidy, oh, and she's part of the cutie patootie chub club and whatever. Like, her persona yeah. on that's that funny. versus... You know, Ellen may have had a chasm between her uh-huh. stage persona and what lurked, you know, in the writer's room. Rosie O'Donnell had the Grand Canyon mm. in terms of that chasm, if you think about it. Mm. You won't even, it'll seem surreal if you find her talking about her love of the Partridge family or David Cassidy or Tom Cruise. Yeah, or well, first off, She's a lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I love me some Tom Cruise. You do? Okay. All right. Well, we'll look for that. We'll take a break. We'll do some news. Jessica's bringing the news. And we'll uh, do those and do that right after this. Morgan and Morgan. Life can be a little crazy sometimes. And one person's negligence can result in another's settlement. So if you're ever injured, check out Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, over 100 offices nationwide, and more than a 1,000 lawyers. That's right. More than $20 billion recovered for 500,000-plus clients. Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record for fighting to get you the full and fair compensation. Go on the road and do stand-up every week. Well, that can be hard. That's what I do. I make it look hard. It's easy for others. But submitting an injury claim with Morgan and Morgan, well, that is easy. So if you have a little situation, you want to talk to a professional, might I suggest my friends at Morgan and Morgan. Right, Dawson? 
If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R ThePeople.com slash Adam or pound law pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. Nice. How's it going? So much fun to be here. Some of you guys probably recognize me from the Ellen DeGeneres show. Started working for Ellen and then I had to grow this beard so they could tell us apart around the office. <laughs> to laugh that hard at that one. In addition to being a writer, I also have uh, two karate trophies and three weightlifting trophies. Because uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but you can just go to the store and buy trophies. There's no test or background check or anything. Just pick them up and impress people. They do use me on air on Ellen sometimes, but like I've only ever been recognized in public once, and it really let me know where I fall on the fame scale. Because uh, I was out at a bar and this girl comes up to me and she goes, oh my gosh, I've seen you on Ellen. Can I get a picture with you? And I said, sure. And she handed me her phone and I tried to get a selfie of us, but nothing happened. And I said, oh, it says your memory is full. You'll have to delete a picture to make room. And she takes her phone and she goes, mmm, nah. <laughs> Adam Yenzer is on the Adam Carolla Show. Adam's here. Jessica's got the news. We might have Rosie... I thought that was Jeff Dunham we were just playing. <laughs> oh, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is this her being saccharine sweet? All right. He's my one and only. I love him. Please welcome the most perfect man on the planet, my Tommy. Tom Cruise! <laughs> Look at him. God, everything seems so dated, doesn't it? I remember this so well. Oh, they can. Oh, okay. She loves Tom oh, Cruise. Oh, she's so grossed out. <laughs> <laughs> well, now all you see is like fake. Like, you just like, Her voice sounds different. Yeah. It does, yeah. Everything is different. All right. Yeah. She loves Tom Cruise. <laughs> I'm guessing this episode was somewhere around Easter because oh no. Easter. All right. Well, how are you? Good, darling. How are good to you? see you. Good to see you. You look real good. So do you. Thank you. I'm nervous. You're nervous? I'm nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> You're like Tommy. Oh, oh my All right. gosh. It's a different human yeah. being. So tell Ellen, uh, she she was second. Uh, Rosie came first, and I'll let she, her know. she <laughs> the the difference between somebody I don't know, Doss, you got to mash it up on your on your own time, but uh, somewhere between hearing her vitriolic screams about having to leave the country if Trump is voted in or something, and that version of her, it's it's big, it's a big chasm. All right. So, uh, what are we doing? The news? Yeah, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Dwayne The Rock Johnson's $11 million UFL deal with Army did nothing to help recruitment struggles. What's and a UFL? It's um, it's the football. It's like a shitty Oh, UFL. Football. That, oh, that UFL. Oh, UFL with the Army. Okay, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah, an even hindered efforts report says uh, legendary pro wrestler Dwayne The Rock Johnson's $11 million partnership with the U.S. Army was so disastrous that it appears to have actually hindered recruitment efforts for the military <laughs> b- branch, according to a report. Um, how could how could he hurt recruitment efforts? And we hurt <laughs> our own. We got all DEI'd and woke and everything. And we fucked up our own recruitment shit. But that's not that's not the Rock's fault. But on the other hand, that's our money we gave him. You know, they go the right. mo- you know they go the, the you know the army wasted eleven. Where they get the money? <laughs> we gave it to him. That's so much money. I know. Does he need? Does he need more money? He doesn't. I agree. Also, I haven't heard him weigh in on anything in a little while. Is you that mean, just me, Dwayne? You mean politically and news-wise? He just kind of weighs in on stuff on occasion. I it seems like he used to, and now I, I think maybe he's trying to stay out of it. I don't know. Maybe his handlers told him. Yeah. I like the slightly demeaning his <laughs> handlers. <laughs> so he's got some wrangler moving him around from room to room. Yeah, well, all right. I don't, uh, 
I, I, the guy has a great work ethic, mm-hmm. which I like, but I don't think that makes him a genius. I, I know. Think, I think he kind of licks his finger and tries to figure out which way the wind yeah. is blowing, and then that's the way he can make. He more also money. definitely doesn't need more money. I, I think this was a few, maybe a year or so ago, he was on some interview, and in his living room, he has a real Tyrannosaurus Rex skull. Mm. That he bought for like a nine, real one? like eight million dollars mm-hmm. or so, and it's just it's just a From decoration. This money. Yeah. It's just a decoration <laughs> in his living room. So we didn't get more army recruits, but he got a, yeah. uh, a dinosaur yeah. skull. We got a T Rex skull. <laughs> yeah. Although it would be fun to go to his house, get yeah. drunk. Oh, on, there it is. Yeah. Get drunk in his tequila oh, yeah. and knock the skull over. <laughs> 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 That'd be the biggest power move in that. He'll be like, world. "Oh damn it, I have He's to do another army commercial yeah. now." Yeah. 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 <laughs> And it'd also be a great story. Like, your friend would go, hey, I got invited to Dwayne's house for a barbecue. You want to come? It's like, I'm banned. Right, right. <laughs> Why? You know, we went over there, and he got his tequila out, yeah. and we started doing shots at Dwayne's tequila, and I got a little, I didn't eat lunch. <laughs> and I got a little disoriented, and I knocked his T-Rex head over, and it's, it's a thousand pieces now. It can never be put back together. It's at some museum in England right now, but it doesn't look good. So yeah, funny. so I got banned. All right. That's yeah. Dwayne. The Army is uh, now trying to recoup its money after claiming The Rock didn't hold up his end of the deal by sharing an agreed-upon number of social media posts during mm. the United Football League season. Uh-huh. All right. How many followers does the United Football League have? I don't, I don't. I don't know, but don't he. Know, but that get a lot but of the Rock has three hundred ninety-six oh, okay. million followers. He's got a lot, so he has a ton. Yeah, they. I like when they try to reinvent football because yeah. we just kind of like football the way we like football. <laughs> yes. They'll do this thing where they go, in our USFL league, you the, the, the they get a the offense gets a running start, <laughs> and one guy. Has a spear gun, <laughs> you right. know, and you're like, but it's like I'm sorry, I just want what we got. Yeah, I'll wait. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. What's next? Do you want to continue oh, with that one? Johnson said on his Instagram that the T Rex skull is a replica. Well, yeah. After oh, I destroyed right. his real one, <laughs> oh, it's a replica. <laughs> yeah, he had to replace it yeah. with a replica. You don't get just get the real deal after it shattered a million pieces after my drunken tequila <laughs> so laced funny. tirade. Yeah, it's not the real Stan T Rex. Real Stan T Rex. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. But maybe he's just saying that. Yeah, it feels like he could probably afford a real one if he wanted it. I, I mean, he of, obviously yeah. can. I think it's a lot like, of women who wear real fur go, this is fake fur, just to be yeah, left Yeah, why so I would say that. paint thrown on them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd be like, this isn't real, but secretly like, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah why wouldn't you? That's baby chinchilla. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> just tell your close friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, they would. They have to torture the chinchilla, and so they don't want to cut the fur. They pull them out of their own asshole. Oh, but it's great. <laughs> it feels so good, especially the description. during the winter. Yeah, yeah. That's horrible. Mm. Um, the, I like this part though. Um, the uh, the documents also pointed to inexperienced UFL staff causing numerous breakdowns in communication, leading to the Army to pick up a significant amount of additional work. Army marketing officials ultimately ruled that they have a lack of confidence that the future deals uh, with the UFL can be successful and are now looking to recoup six million of the eleven million deal. Uh, according to the documents, which is like, yeah, of course, that's like an insane amount to pay the rock of. I think that's so ridiculous to pay the rock. Like, who is he going to who is he going to recruit? He's like going to recruit Gen- a bunch of young dudes Gen who watch Z? Fast and Furious movies. You think Gen Z likes the rock? I don't know. I, I thought I thought he was ubiquitously loved, but I don't know. I what think Gen he is Z's loved, into. but I don't think that's like someone that's going to be like, oh, like, mm-hmm. if he's saying that. Well, okay, so then what you'd have to kind of do is you'd go, well, if not The Rock, then, then, who? then who? Like, right. you don't want I Dylan mean, Mulvaney. Z, but but like, I don't who know who, we, some TikTok star. I, 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 I mean, I'm I sure mean, Look, if I was in a room with a bunch of old military guys yeah. and someone said, we can get Dwayne to help yeah. recruiting, yeah. then I'd go, yeah, it seems like a good dude for that. Yeah, that's who made the decision, though. Yeah, that's who is, makes the decision. All the guys that have no aren't in touch. Yeah. Now, do <laughs> well, I don't think it's a preposterous notion that he would be a good guy to recruit. But they lost money, and he a didn't fulfill his yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. Now, do we know? Does the army themselves have a UFL team? Because I know I they have a college team. I talk about this in my drive bar special, but it's always weird to me. I know it's the the officers, not the enlisted guys, on the army football team. 
But it's always been weird to me that there's just school students playing football against each other, and then one of the teams is the army, yeah. and they're not that good. Like, yeah. how does that, oh, it's like I, I go, I go how, how do you how do you like defeat Nazi Germany and the Islamic State in Syria, but and then you, lose to Western Kentucky? <laughs> right, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's a funny bit, yeah. and it's true because they're not that good. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and we bring up the Air Force Academy, who is yeah. pretty good. Um, what else? What else okay. we got? Uh, more people are driving on cannabis. Law enforcement uh, is racing to learn who is high. Everybody. <laughs> it's just so funny that they're racing. I don't know why that makes me laugh. Everybody's high. <laughs> Right. And we did a thing with pot, which is we turned it into something mythical and good, and it's not, but <laughs> we fucked ourselves up. So we went super hard with pot early when we had a whole smear campaign and reefer madness and everything like that. So there's a whole plan to get rid of pot early. And then that gave way to another plan where people went, are you kidding? I used it to heal <laughs> myself and glaucoma and right. I cured AIDS with reefer and blah, blah, blah. And then started giving some sort of mystical powers. It's really just you altering yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is fine, but no one uh, ascribes mystical powers to beer. Yeah. It's just like, oh, that guy's fucking son yeah, wants to drink some right, beer. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? But they don't, like, they don't put, they don't go, I'm more creative, or I do all my writing, mm -hmm. or I feel free, <laughs> yeah. or I love, it, you know, I love doing this. While, it's just like you fucking drink you're beer yeah. because you like drinking beer yeah. and it right. tastes good and it feels good and like whatever. Pot's the same, and should you be driving your car with X amount of beers? No. Should you be driving your car with X amount of weed? Mm -hmm. No. It's it's the same, but I, it's harder for them to detect, I guess. Yeah, that's what this is saying. It's uh, the legalization of marijuana likely accounts for an additional 1,400 traffic fatalities in the U.S. each year. A 2023 study in the International Journal of Drug Policy found uh, many drivers don't realize cannabis impairs driving only 70% of drivers say it is very dangerous to drive an hour after using marijuana compared to the 94% for alcohol. Yeah. There's a, I'd see commercials. There's like PSAs where the guy's talking about not smoking uh -huh. and driving, but it's kind of weird. They don't really go, don't smoke. They just go smoke out, but just don't don't drive people are also shitty enough drivers especially in this town everyone's oh, yeah. a shit driver in this town they're I all felt, high yeah i'm constantly <laughs> honking at people it's a constant honk fest uh there's the people who refuse to turn right on a red they drive me nuts there's the, the person i like the most is the person that doesn't know when you're turning left, you're supposed to go into the intersection oh. yeah. and stop there's people like i like Just to right do it from there. behind the crosswalk and it's like First off, I'm looking at male pattern baldness on the back yeah. of your seat, and you got a cigarette <laughs> hanging out. Like you're definitely middle aged dude. You what? Did you not learn to move forward, that you pull yeah. into the thing? Mm -hmm. And they're like, "Well, I don't want to." And it's like, "Yeah, except for I'm not making it because yeah. you're mm -hmm. taking off from behind the starting line. Move on out." And they're like, "What?" And I'm like, uh, "What? We got enough of those people." And now sometimes they don't weed. even get all the way into the turning lane. They're they're still halfway into the lane next to it. That you, that lane then has to go all around them while they're waiting to turn. My newest obsession. There's two people. Okay, there's two versions of this. There's the person that let's just say you're going down the two lane highway, like you're going down PCH, and they have a whole middle section. And if you want to turn into Gladstones or some restaurant or something, you pull into the middle section and then you turn left. Yeah. Right. You know, there's the people that do that, but I like to hang yep. oh, into yeah. the first so like that the people behind them. They'll can't. hang it out yeah. just enough to take yep. up one lane. And it's yeah. like, would, would you pull yeah. into the fucking yeah. thing? Exactly. It's, there's an area made for you to turn left. Yeah. There's two, there's, okay, there's 10 people I hate. One. <laughs> I, I want the number to keep going up, yeah, like guy, through this. Guy drives there's like fucking 56 Jeff people I hate, yeah. Okay. <laughs> there's the person who's in the left lane who almost comes to a stop and then moves into the, it's like, move, just move over. Uh -huh. You have a whole center <laughs> section for you to turn left into moon shadows yeah. or dukes or whatever. Why are you, Hank, why did you come to a stop in the left lane and then move it over? Just mm -hmm. slide over. Yeah. Or stop. Stop and hang just enough so people have to stop in that lane. 
And then this person, and I don't know the love of Christ who this person is, but I've encountered him all the time. I drive a big white SUV. Modern cars have lots of mirrors now, like big mm-hmm. outside mirror, big, like we work the mirror thing out. Mm-hmm. It used to be just the one on the driver's side, the size of a woman's compact, you know. It's, like, it's big and bold now. Like, you know when people are behind you, around you, your car will be like, nee, 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 you know, someone thing, a little light lighting yeah, up. Yeah. So. yeah. It's the person that stops and you're trying to move it over into their lane and you're wedged. You're about halfway there's 20 feet in front of them. They won't move up. They won't move up. It's like, I got my blinker on. Please I'm huge. just move a little I'm bit. Sideways. Yeah. I'm half into your lane. They 100% see you. Yeah. How can you not see me? Uh, they're safe. Just pull yes. forward. Yeah. They're just pull safe and taking four care of feet. Yeah. Four yeah. feet. And I can slide in, but yeah. you will not move. What is that? What is Insane. that? They're high. They're high. This is the article. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Identifying when a driver is impaired by marijuana has long been difficult, partly because there isn't a reliable drug test for impairment like there is with alcohol. Mm. I'll just see what they've been listening to on their radio. <laughs> you're and you're best, like, nah, yeah. That's the Bob Marley. Like, all right, bro. Got get it. out of the car. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I know what you're listening to. Yeah. If you're listening yeah, to it's Christian easy to rock, detect you're someone fine. that's high just like talking to them or hearing their music, but I guess through blood. Yeah, I just want to check their playlist. We'll figure that out. <laughs> also, everyone that's high tells you they're high. Like, all you have to do is be like, are you high? And they're like, yeah. I've never <laughs> met somebody not tell me when they're high. Well, they don't say I'm high. They start laughing. Yeah, or yeah, th- yeah so that's I, true. I, I but it's to, almost like they're like, <laughs> yeah. On Loveline, all the time I'd go, are you high? And yeah. they go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. So just ask for their high, and they start yeah. laughing. Yeah. We're good. Um, yep. Alabama was one of the first states to start using the test in 2018. Oh, sorry. On some tests, THC and other drugs will show a red line if present, but uh, it is up to each manufacturer to decide how much THC is considered positive. Mm. So the amounts are uh, predetermined thresholds and vary across different states. And Alabama was the first one to start using those tests. It's a weird Alabama (laughs) first, right? Yeah. It's also weird they didn't think of working this out before they legalized pot everywhere. They didn't foresee that this yeah, might like be a problem. Oh, people be a problem, are probably like, going to drive Jump in their car. Yeah, yeah, that's like, true. Like, we'll probably have to deal with this at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that is true. We should like, have you know, seen this We know what happens with alcohol. Yeah. It, was, it should have been, maybe we should get on top of this. That's true. <laughs> and, and also, people are a little bit paranoid about drinking and driving. Mm-hmm. They do mm-hmm. not share that with pot like they think I'm, yeah. I'm cool they with think it. it's somehow safer or it's not going to affect them as much yeah, right. well, I, I, I think they think like I don't think it, when it comes to drinking and driving or pot and driving I'm never worried about my potential skill to drive because I'm a highly skilled driver mm-hmm. so when I'm impaired I just get dumbed down to everyone else <laughs> you know so I fit right in but it's more about you get a DUI and your life is destroyed yeah. in this town. So you mm-hmm. want to, you know, Uber and take, be careful and so on and so forth. But I wouldn't, I would be more casual with pot. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I think if I was at someone's house and, and I was like getting ready to leave and they're like, you need another beer or something? I'd be like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't, I don't think I should do that. I'm, I'm getting ready to leave. But if they said you want to hit off a joint, You're I'd like, be sure. like, yeah. Say, yeah, I should do that. I yeah. should do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, because you won't get in trouble. You know? yeah. That's right. That's you what might I kill would think. someone, but That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Do you want to keep going or you want to do a different one? Do a different one. You're over I the got pot. got a contact high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bill Maher. Uh, Travis is going to dump Taylor is what he says. Oh, Bill, Bill Maher. is making it perfectly clear uh, that he ain't no Swifty. Going as far as to predict Travis Kelsey will dump the hell out of, t- out of Taylor Swift sooner or later. Mm-hmm. Why? Where did he say that on his show? Oh, he's talking about Hakua, yeah. girl. 
What, what happened is, to his guest list? Yeah. <laughs> like, it was like it was like That's Seinfeld and, and political figures, and now he's got Hawk to a girl. I got bumped by Butt Funnel Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to do the show Wednesday, but Butt Funnel Boy. No longer. Fucking the video went viral. And yeah, it went viral. And, uh, oh, I got bumped by Butt Funnel Boy, so here we are. That's great. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he says uh, the singer is too old to be rocking the Kansas City Chiefs jersey at the games and thought her high school style declarations of love will end up being too much for Travis. I think it's it's bold to predict that he's going to dump her because I feel like the trend with Taylor Swift is that doesn't she always dump her boyfriends? No, no, no. The guys always dump Oh, her. the guys always that dump is her. The trend. Oh, okay. I didn't know the guys always dump her. I yeah. thought it was her doing. Wait it a minute, that's not the trend. Yeah, it I, is. I thought the trend was her dumping the she guys. Dumped she dumped her last songs guy. No, you guys. You got to be dumped to write good songs. Oh, you can't okay. be the dump dump er. All of her song. songs are like yeah. you know revenge and yeah. you know that's why it's so oh, great. Okay. That's why, yeah. That's why I think whoa, that she. Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. <laughs> First off, I yeah. should be Leonard Bernstein if uh, getting dumped <laughs> yeah. made you a skilled yeah. songwriter. You Get could your be. Heart broken. <laughs> I, I should be uh, hammering, hammering <laughs> publishing checks all day, not fucking coming here. No. All right, that's number one. All right. She was with weird, greasy, semi punk, rocky, rock and roll English guy last yeah, yeah. before mm-hmm. Taylor, before Travis. And I think she dumped him. I mean, John Matt, Mayer, Maddie, like Maddie Healy, but Joe you're you're, Jonas. you're going way, but you're going deep. I'm I mean, talking about like the last four guys. Then she had the blonde guy, who um, looked like oh, we got a list. Oh wow. wow, that's, that's a, a that's, that's a, a nice roster list. right there. Hey, could you shoehorn me in between Zach Efron and John Mayer just because that'd just be cool? Nobody will ever notice. It'll we'll just, live we'll in, go back in, one in day. perpetuity. Yeah. <laughs> like kids are going to be cruising the internet 50 years from now. Go, oh, that hey, dad? dad? Yeah. Good he on you, old cool. man. Yeah, he can barely walk now, but Jesus Christ, I guess yeah. he had a prime. <laughs> Yeah, give me between uh, yeah, give me between Mayor and Zach Efron. Um, <laughs> so, oh God, Taylor Lautner. Um, so, Tom Hiddleston. Um, mm. All right, didn't her last? Didn't she? Now she had the blonde guy who looked like Mia Farrow's kid, like a straight version of Mia Farrow's kid, like Harry Styles, <laughs> Joe Alwyn. Joe Alwyn. Oh, yeah, he's oh. in the upper left there. Harry Styles is the blonde guy who looked like Mia Farrow's kid. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not that they're <laughs> he does both look white like guys. Yeah, yeah. So. no, I mean, I mean this guy. I mean, oh, Joe this Alwyn. guy does. Yeah. Wait, Styles? No, I'm not talking about Styles. He, mm. she was with Styles. Harry Styles. He's All on right. the list. Um. So who's the guy? Is it Joe Allen or whatever? The guy she was with for like five years. That's the guy, right? The blonde guy looks think, like. Yeah. I don't know what his name is, though. Mm-hmm. Is that his? What's Joe his Allen. Did she, did she oh, how come we have a picture of him that looks like from his junior high <laughs> yearbook or something? That looks nothing like the blonde guy who. Anyway, it's a picture of him at 14, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> find like a modern. Oh, there. Yeah. Find a, a modern picture of him. Anyway. She now, mm-hmm. all right. Now that's the blonde guy. Looks like Mia Farrow's kid. <laughs> did did she dump him? I think she did. And then she dumped the greasy guy. So uh, she she may have got dumped early on, but yeah. I think she's made a comeback. Because who the fuck's dumping her at this stage? I don't know, but songwriting and good songwriting dictates that she was dumped. Yeah, that's kind of what that's I. That's how you write good songs. No, she was dumped I, I at, a, at an early part of her yeah. existence. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. but I don't know. But recently, she that's dropped some people. Yeah, yeah. Right. no problem. Since she started doing yeah. her seventh show at SoFi, right. she stopped getting dumped. Right. Right. So that's. I don't think Travis is going anywhere. I mean, she's rich. I mean, she's kind <laughs> so of. So is he? She's yeah. a pig. I mean, look at her. But <laughs> but she's got cash, you know. So you can just kind of hold his nose and deal with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's rich now too, so uh, yeah. everyone's rich. I just like mm-hmm. the idea that she shouldn't be wearing like his jersey, but everybody else can. It's so funny to me. Like every dude ever wears jerseys, and that's okay, but not not this young girl. Yeah, and it's her boyfriend. Yeah. Well, by the way, all the all the black it's, mamas up in the stands are always wearing their sons' jerseys. Yeah, too. And sometimes, but that makes more sense than like a random dude wearing someone else's. 
jersey. No, I said there's nothing wrong with Mama up there wearing that jersey. Yeah. Mm. Dad would be wearing them if they sold them in prison. All right. Let's uh, move that ahead. That picture looks so right. It looks like like an episode of To Catch a Predator where they're like about to walk. <laughs> like where, oh, where Chris great. Hansen's about to walk in and be like, why did you invite her over for Red yeah, Bulls? because <laughs> she looks so young. Yeah. That's All awesome. right. Let's, we'll play him saying it. What about Taylor Swift? I like Taylor Swift. You do? I do. I liked her more when she was country. Mm. I did too. Like, I really liked her when I was I younger. I love uh, Sparks Fly. Loved it. Look, I'm sure she's a lovely person, but the whole thing with the football player, just like, I just felt like 35 was a little old to be like, my boyfriend's a football player. <laughs> <laughs> and I wear his jersey to the game with his number on it. Right? I mean, come on. <sighs> Whatever makes her happy. No, oh, of course. If that's what she wants to do, uh, it makes her happy. No. It's a <laughs> scintillating <laughs> interview. It's, it's, it's really riveting. <laughs> Wait till you hear you Butt Funnel that. Boy's hot take <laughs> on <laughs> Taylor <laughs> Travis. I mean, with her, it's like, it's like the Gatorade at the Super Bowl. You know you're going to get dumped. You just don't know when. But you got to think about it this way. If he does that, can you imagine the next album we're going to get off of that? <laughs> Yes, I can. It won't be fuck John Mayer no more. It'll be fuck Travis. That was a long time ago. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was oh, a bad conversation. Was that Bill is... like, I just want some light lifting today. Yeah. Who do we got? <laughs> yeah, he seems like a, a teen. Well, like I've hanging done out. the show yeah. um, before. Then I was got bumped by Bud Funnel Boy. But <laughs> I just, yeah, Bill gets really fucking hot. Yeah. Real gets really high, and you just sit there and you're like, "Oh, you're super high! Oh, wow, this is high!" Like, and then you know, I wasn't smoking; I had a drink, you know. But I was like, "I've just had a drink, so I'm I'm good." But you're super high, so that's that's Bill being super high <laughs> with with Huck to it girl who seems to be making around. Look, can I say this? As a woman, a little controversial, but. If you're blonde, okay, being blonde, <laughs> being not old, and being not fat does not make you de facto hot. Mm, mm-hmm. Although if you're if you're blonde, you're tan, you're not fat, and you're not old does not mean you're hot. It just means you're not fat <laughs> and you're not old. That's essentially what that means. We do way too much like, oh, look at her. Like, yeah. He's not... An attractive girl or a beauty. She's just not fat and blonde. Are you talking about Taylor or Hawk to a girl? I'm talking Hawk to a girl. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. I should have delineated that. Hawk to a girl. Uh, Taylor is very beautiful. She's beautiful. Hawk to a girl is blonde, not old, and not fat. I, I, she's 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 a cute girl. I just feel like it's because it's like she's blonde, she's, not old, not like saying, you. She's, she's, you she's rise cuter, to the level she's of a than seven. People that are yeah that are not all those things. But it doesn't oh, make yeah. you, it doesn't make you de facto like a hot girl just by not. right. Yeah, I agree with that. But that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. And I realize yeah, it sounds like Taylor <laughs> Swift. But t- t- Taylor Swift is is beautiful. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You all got right. another one. Yeah. Let's do, do it. Do ultra processed foods harm your brain? Oh yeah, <laughs> everything that everything that's good harms of course, your brain. Yeah, everything we want to do harms that. our brain. Yes, yes, yeah. People who regularly eat processed red meat, like hot dogs, bacon, sausage, salami, and bologna, have a greater risk of developing dementia later in life. Hmm. Well, people that eat a lot of bologna, <laughs> of course, really never had an A game in the first place. Like, how are you going to know that guy's off? Bologna is not made to be consumed past the age of nine and is gross all all day, every yeah. day. There's nothing that's what grosser than bologna. Grow up. I mean, I grew up on bologna. Oh, yeah. When you're a kid, when there's you're, bologna on everything. Yeah, but it's yeah. like yeah. my dad was eating bologna. He's a grown man. You know, yeah. it's like... What, was now, your, what, what did your dad do? Um, he used to work for the airlines. Eastern Airlines. Eastern Airlines. Mm. Wow. They you know who was the voice of Eastern Airlines? Who? Jim Backus. Do you know who Jim Why Backus is? I know is? that name. Who is that? I don't. He's the rich guy from Gilligan's oh, Island. Okay, yeah, yeah. Who basically when you hear he 
invented the rich guy voice. Like, oh, that's lovely. what everybody ah, imitates every, now. Like yeah, when you listen right. to Yacht Rock, uh-huh. that guy's like, oh, <laughs> Christopher, <laughs> more Christopher Cross. Great yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so I'll have too. another mitten julep. You know, he, <laughs> that's Jim Backus. Oh. And Jim Backus used to do the voice of Eastern Airlines, which had a bird as mm. their mascot. And they'd go, Eastern Airlines, the only way to fly. And no. that was the old commercial. I never flew on Eastern Airlines. I never went to the airport. I never got on an airplane. But I would watch all the commercials. So <laughs> but somebody, I loved. Somebody's doing that. Your dad would eat bologna as a as I a, mean, he an made adult. us it and he would eat it. It's like, I mean, it was just a, it's mostly poor people eat bologna. It's not like a. Yeah, or I even remember hot as a kid. Dogs yeah. or it was white bread and bologna, and it would get stuck to the roof yeah. of your mouth. When and you it was ate exciting. Sandwich, it would yeah. like blow up on the on the stove, and you were like, "Oh yeah. wow!" You got bologna on like Wonder Bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, yeah. I didn't. I, we didn't get that. We didn't. My yeah. mom thought white bread was bad, so we never <laughs> and got she white was bread. Apparent, well, this was about the meat, but I'm sure yeah, she was right about right. that. Yeah, too, yeah. The process, oh, she was right the about it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, the study tracked more than 130,000 adults in the United States uh, for up to 43 years. During that period, 11,173 people developed dementia. Those who consumed about two servings of processed red meat per week had a 14% greater risk of developing dementia compared to those who ate fewer than three servings per month. Hmm. I feel so like I'm at risk just... then. I, I feel like I eat a lot of bacon. That's one of the things on there, right? I mean, yeah. um, I like how you're, you're like, I'm is like, that on probably, there? That's probably, gonna, yeah, yeah not, it's definitely on there, yeah. They're not it's supposed like, to eat lots of cured meats. Yeah. Right. But uh, but there's probably versions of bacon you can get yeah. that are a lot better than also, other versions. I don't know if I would mind, because you ever see those stories about, like, old people with dementia or Alzheimer's, and it's like they're married to the same person, they have to wake up and reintroduce themselves and, like, fall in love every day. They, yeah. they meet or, the person. Or that's how I would person. feel. Yeah. That's how I feel it'll happen with me and bacon. I'll eat bacon my whole life, and then I'll get dementia and forget about bacon. And then I can then wake up the next day again. and just, yeah. just fall in love with bacon again. And, and it'll all dream. pay off. It'll all pay off in the end. You'll be elderly, so you get a discount yeah. over at um, Denny's. Old you, know, yeah. you can go there and <laughs> yeah. be alone with exactly. your bacon. Yeah, so it might work out in the long run. I think run. it I mean, would. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, could you imagine? It'd be nice to have dementia and then be like, is bologna good for you? Yeah, like, you just, just don't know. It. Yeah. <laughs> Experiencing bacon for the first time every, every morning. Every morning. Oh, you get I can't to wake imagine. up and do that every day. We introduced oh, it to yeah. our little boys and they're upset. I mean, they went crazy. And I'm like, wow, people just like. Yeah. It was interesting watching someone never try. So I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. I guess bacon is that good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Although we're we're hitting a saturation point where they're spreading it on too much stuff. But I think it's funny that it took forty three years to come up with this. Like that's like yeah. it feels like it should have been. Did you find the Eastern Airline commercial? <laughs> I really want to with see Jim Backus and you can oh, wow I was so we have can, we have the Western Airlines commercial with uh, birds oh maybe it's Western mm. uh, maybe oh. you can't, it, uh, the Eastern Airlines voice does kind of sound like him but we haven't confirmed oh uh, well let me hear us. Eastern let, well maybe it's Western then let's hear Western excuse me you look familiar uh, you've probably seen me on television <laughs> oh. yeah champagne flight. Western Airlines, the only way to fly, <laughs> naturally. Hmm, maybe oh. it was Western Airlines. Hey, what kind of flying is that? A champagne flight. Uh, a champagne flight? <laughs> He's smoking. Western Airlines. Yeah. Lit his <laughs> That's great. Hey. The stewardess lit his cigarette. All right, well, now I'll have to hear mm. Eastern if airlines. It's the same one. Or... Well, we're looking at Western airline yeah. airline commercial, which does a little. It's the only way to fly. Is was That's what Jim said. Backus said, but now maybe Eastern and Air and Western are the same. affiliated somehow. We'll see if we can see what it's Sunday in Mexico. The sun floods an arena. The historic duel is on. The sun spotlights a diver at Acapulco. Referees a children's game at the pyramids of Teotihuacan. Ooh, that's before all the drug the sun lords. The warms a beautiful mermaid in oh. Puerto Rico. And covers the vacation paradise of Miami. I bet these are all places Eastern Airlines goes. 
<laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Every year, more people choose this one to the sun because Eastern service is as warm as the destination. Wow, simpler times. No, it wasn't Eastern. You got, it's Western. It's Western. And it's yeah. a more modern. Mm. We're looking at stuff from like the 50s. They, the one I'm talking about from the 70s, I think. is You need color. You need, uh, you need it in color on Western. I think that'll, that'll be more my childhood. If you see stuff that looks like it's from 59, it's probably not what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> I'm old, but I'm not that old that I would sit home and watch commercials from 1959. Deep into that. But if you go more like 75 and it's color and it looks a little more modern, then that'll probably be more what I was talking about. And and I don't know if the first bird got replaced by Jim Western's or not. Western's Wally Bird. That's it. Bird. And, and that was Jim Backus, right? Well, let's see. Let's see if we can see it. That's what I'm saying. Smoking and drinking. It's a bird. <laughs> Refreshing Western Airlines. The only way to fly. Yeah, that's about all we had as a kid. You just hear something like that, and then you'd show up to school the next day, and you'd go Western Airlines. <laughs> yeah. The only way to fly, yeah. and they'd go, "All right, here's your bologna sandwich. I'm gonna sit over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to the airport. I'm never getting on a plane, but I do know the commercial." <laughs> all right, we should take a break because when we come back, uh, Joe came up with a game called uh, Reddit or Forget It, mm. which is we hear horrible things said on Reddit. We read horrible things said on Reddit and determine if they are real All right. or if they are fake. And, and Dawson is armed with that? Dawson is armed with that, and I am armed with whether or not they are real or fake. All right. Mm -hmm. We'll do that right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Ace hey, Man, Chris in San Diego. Just saw one of your electric... Uh, freeway signs that I thought you might like. It said, you're on a freeway, not a speedway. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. I don't like that the message is slow down, slow down, slow down, and a city's laden with traffic all the time. Why yeah. is the refrain? Like, slow it down. Like, <laughs> nobody's going anywhere. Yeah. How about Drive like champs, or be efficient, or use your fucking turn <laughs> Get signal. Get where you're going. <laughs> or you got a horn, use it. Yeah. Wake up, bitches. T turn right on a red. It's like there's so many things you. they could do to <laughs> yeah. just go slow it yeah. down. It's like it's like you 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 run a, a molasses factory where you you pipe in um, a, a sedative and you walk in there and you go slow it down. <laughs> It's like we're slowed down to a grinding halt already. Please do something other than slow it down. Yeah. I'd like to speed it up. I'd like to be more efficient. <laughs> but there are many things you could say. It's it's just a never-ending refrain of like slow yeah. it down. I I'm in Malibu. It takes me an hour and ten minutes to get home. I sit in fucking traffic. I average 13 miles an hour. I don't need to slow it yeah. down. People in front of me need to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> they need to pace it up. Yeah. Look, Be how careful. Many, how yeah. many accidents throughout Southern California and beyond, all the big cities, what if people just very consistently used their blinker? Like oh, they yeah. just went, mm -hmm. I'm going to use the shit out of my blinker and I will use it as intended. If I mm -hmm. am planning on switching lanes, I'm putting that blinker on 500 yards before I'm starting to move. How many accidents alone would that, that. just prevent? Yeah. Just using the blinker. Yeah. Just the blinker. Yep. Just the blinker. <laughs> so can't we just put that on the sign? <laughs> no, we cannot. We got to tell you to slow use it down. Blinker. Yeah. Slow it down. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I'm, I'm going to walk into an AIDS hospice and go, slow it down, folks. Slow it down. Or an old age home. <laughs> <laughs> slow it down. Just slow it down. No. We don't need to slow it down. We're going slow enough, <laughs> but we could use our blinkers and we could turn right on a red. Yeah. All right. Sorry. What do you got, Joe? <laughs> or no, Dawson. 
We all know that Reddit is the internet's premier cesspool of hate and intolerance. And I'm so happy for that too. Are you folks? Yeah. But let's see if Adam can tell which negative Reddit comments are real and which are not. What we really have for you today that's so spectacular is Reddit or all right, so I'm going to read something that's either from Reddit or from the brilliant mind of producer Joe Prano. <laughs> now, I got to say this. People talk about Twitter. I go to Twitter all the time. Everyone's super nice. I get almost no shit ever. But Reddit, I never go to because Reddit is, is brutal, right? Brutal, brutal. But why, why did Reddit turn into that? And why is Twitter sort of generally complimentary? Nerd rage? Is that what it I is? Don't know. I, I feel like because I've seen some negative stuff on Twitter. I don't use Twitter a whole lot, but I've seen comments it, it, on, from it, other it's people. It's usable. I mean, it's but, doable. It's just not as consistently as horrible Reddit. as I think Reddit. people yeah. saw Reddit as sort of this, I don't know if it is, but when there was all the debates over like censorship on social media platforms, I think people saw Reddit as a place they could go where they wouldn't be censored. And mm. it kind of drew a lot of mm. people that want to say the most, all right. the worst things they can to get well, away with it. we got to play the game. Adam is like Charlie Kirk. Except somehow with worse opinions and a bigger face. Read it or forget it. Mm. Charlie Kirk is a political mm -hmm. commentator, a right-leaning. Um, got a pretty big face. Got good hair. Um, this uh, sounds too specific. So it's like Charlie Kirk, with, but with bad. Worse opinions and a bigger face. Everybody always tells me why my opinions are wrong, but they never tell me what's wrong. Yeah. They don't tell me the <laughs> yeah. part where it's wrong. They just go, you're an, you're an asshole on yeah. everything you've said about COVID or whatever. And I go, okay, fine, but tell me what I'm wrong about. Yeah. And they will never volunteer the part where I'm wrong. They just don't like it. I also feel the face part throws me off because I could see somebody disagreeing with your opinions, but I don't think you have a bigger face than Charlie Kirk. That's a you're, he's you're, got a big you're he's a got a deer. big face. He's got a big face. You're to, a deer. You're a deer for saying that. I really? just like that. If it's going to be Joe that wrote this, that's what he thinks about that's you. True. you know? it, is, it is an insight <laughs> into is, Joe. Whichever one is not run it. This is what Joe really yeah. thinks about you. Just so you know. Adam. Oh, this is going to be very well. T yes, this is going to be very informative. As to right. what Joe thinks he of me. Gets fired or not. This yeah. feels too spe specific. I don't know if Joe knows who Charlie Kirk is. I'm going to go, this is Reddit. I'm, I'm going Reddit. What do you guys think? Uh, I'll go forget it. I'll, I'll pick the other one. All right. But I, I, I don't know. I think it's Reddit. That one was me. <laughs> so, so that I is really we had to start. We had to Goodbye. start you off with one. Just so you, just so you could see where we're at. All right. <laughs> I, I believe that one must have been derivative. I feel like you were cruising you Reddit, the word. you found a couple of digs about Charlie Kirk. And then <laughs> that was the day me. we had Charlie Kirk on. I was like, oh, this is perfect. And then we haven't played it. And then this game got postponed for a little while. Oh, uh, <laughs> we had Charlie Kirk. When did, Charlie or did we have him scheduled to be on? I don't think he's been on, but you can look in a while. Now you got to look. If he hasn't been on, that really is just what you think. It's, there's no, there's no excuse. There's no on. excuse for it anymore. <laughs> All right, next one. Adam is a miserable asshole and wants everyone to be like him. Read it or forget it. Uh, I'm oh, oh, so I want everyone to be miserable like me because I'd like them to just be like me because <laughs> I pay a lot of taxes and you know I'm, I don't litter. <laughs> so we'd, we'd be living in a fucking utopia, and I yeah. drive hard, man. Yeah. I, I don't monkey around with that red turn era. So uh, that's, that sounds pretty, pretty basic. And uh, I'm always curious on the, like, oh, he's so angry. I'm always like, I, I don't really, I, I, I don't like inefficiencies. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't like stupidity <laughs> and inefficiencies. But in general, I'm in a pretty good mood. I say except when driving. Except for I'm driving. <laughs> well, the reason well, I get angry when I drive is because it's like we're not. We could do this so much better yeah. if no, we just get it. tried. Yeah. Or, or got I like the word how passionate out. you are. To, and it's about fun it. to rant about those. Things. I think some people take it as angry if you're ranting about a specific thing. So no, you're not an angry person. But there's these things that get yeah, there's to you certain where it's things like, that this are. Is I, what I'm, this is what I'm going to go you. off. This is what I'm going to go off on. I don't yeah. think people understand that. Like where they go, like, oh. This is just 
You just did 20 minutes on string cheese. You yeah. must be angry. Yeah, it's like, yeah. no, I'm not. You I just, just storm around string angry cheese. at string cheese all I'm day. Just, I'm, I'm doing a riffing yeah. on this thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a non-comedian thing. I think that sounds like a pretty realistic, right. believable comment. I, You know, I said that about the last yeah. one, yeah. too. Yeah, so this is just like. I'm going to go, this is Reddit. Same. I'll go Reddit also. I will, too. That one was from Reddit six yeah. months ago via Nickel Arse Brooks. Nichols. Mm. And I'm not going to be satisfied until Nichols all yeah. pissed too? <laughs> yeah, that's my plan. Well, it's also, if these people Misery, have, universal. Yeah. If these people have this opinion of you, it means they're listening to you enough to say, oh, he's angry and he's a miserable person, but he's, they're tuning in all the time. So yeah. as long as they're listening, I feel like that's always. Yeah. Yeah. Adam seems like the kind of guy who'd try to pay a hooker in free product from one of his sponsors. <laughs> Read it or forget it. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. Uh, listen, we had so much AG1 around here that I knew we would never consume it. So, And she looked a little emaciated, so... <laughs> And that's as much as I'm going to say about that. But, uh, what am I going to do? Just th throw it out or give it to an emaciated hooker? Yeah. It's All like right. charity at that point. Yeah. Uh, that's clever. I'd say too clever. I'd say too clever for Reddit. But that Joe, feels like Joe. Joe's a professional comedy writer over there. Yeah. So I think that's Joe's. I, I think that's, that's Joe. Joe's work. What do you think, Adam? I, I think so, too. I think that's forget it. That one really is what I think of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, Too smart for Reddit. Adam's face looks like a nut sack. <laughs> Reddit or forget it. I like how that's it. It's just like, period. Now, well, let's see. Are you guys three for three? Are you guys running the table here? What's the score right now? I, th mm -hmm. I, got, I, I think I have three. I think you're three for three, both of you. And then you're two for three, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I would think. Uh, Adam's face looks like a nut sack. What do you think? Uh, that one seems like typical Reddit stuff. I would believe that that's a Reddit comment. Yeah, that's it's not just, very. It's just smart. sort of. That's it's just sort of g generic internet vitriol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, generic just, internet vitriol. That. Yeah, about anyone. Not even sure what I I I I always think like what's in it for the person. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But I feel that way when I look at bumper stickers. Yeah, I'm just like yeah. What, what do they what? do after they write? Do they come back and check how many likes? Yeah, yeah six like other people like, think his face looks like a nut sack. Yeah, because I've never I've written won the a day. mean comment, and I'm like, what happens after you do that? Yeah, <laughs> it's like the best feeling ever. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we all think that's a, it's yeah. a Reddit. That's Reddit. That's not... All right, that's Reddit. That one's from Reddit via yeah. Senor Crazy Pants <laughs> <laughs> two years ago. Mm. That adds up. <laughs> but that guy's bought some chicharronis in his day, <laughs> right? I fed him, yes. <laughs> you fed him your wonderful fair? Oh, man. Some of those chicharronis kind of look like nut sacks when they put the picture It is there, very or, nut sacky, you know. the chicharroni. Like, oh, that's funny. Mm -hmm. Adam's hatred of gum is ironic because that's what his show is. It used to be refreshing. Now it's chewed up trash that's been driven into the sidewalk. <laughs> Read it or forget it. Joe? I do hate gum. <laughs> no, I don't hate gum. I hate those who chew gum. Oh. Those, uh, it's a difference. Um, that felt like a full j joke. It felt like a full, a full joke. It felt like a, a little written... forced, though. I feel like I want to think a comedian could write a better joke than that. Uh-oh. Oh, now if it is Joe. Yeah, but, but I think but, they might be trying to disguise <laughs> it. But let me say this in Joe's defense. Yeah. Remember, he's trying to throw That's us off. That's what I mean. The, I, yeah, it sounds he, a little He may have forced. dumbed himself down a little to seem mm -hmm. like an angry, dumb Reddit writer. Yeah. That's Joe. Look at the other one. It was like, I, nut sack. And this one's like a fool on I think the it's reason Joe why. Too. I think it's forget it. What do you think? I'll go about? Reddit. Are you going Reddit? I'm going to go. I'll go against. Uh -oh. uh, I'll see. I finally got Yenzer. That uh, one is me. It was. Uh, uh, <laughs> ruined my ruined my and perfect. Dawson. Dawson was sure. Ruined that was my Reddit. perfect yeah, score. I was all over Reddit on that one. <laughs> Jessica's run the table so far. <laughs> Did you know you had this skill? This, this one skill? No, this Just is my only one skill. skill. Yes. It only has this unique application. Yes. Still, it's amazing. I hope are I can you, play again one yeah. day. Are you five for five? I don't know. I'm not keeping score. I think she might have gotten the first one wrong. What? Oh. Maybe. I don't remember. Wait, that was the I, I think so. Charlie I think that was the only one. one that wanted to, yeah. Oh, 
Wait, so we're all so tied. we all have we're one. Not we all up. have one wrong. Yeah. Oh God, this is why they call these the championship rounds of Reddit yeah. and forget it. Here we go. The pressure's on. Yeah. There's a reason Adam Carolla spends his weekends doing shows for forty people at some chuckle hut in <laughs> Ballsack, Kansas. Mm. Read it or forget Ooh. it. First off, Dunham's from Ballsack, Kansas. So you, you better watch. Your we have the fucking same accent on. because of that. You sound. That's why you say you're from Ballsack, right? I am. I grew up in Ballsack. I went to Ballsack State. <laughs> you, you went to Scrotum you over there. I did. Yeah. Yep. Oh, nice. All right. <laughs> That's a tough one. That one stung a little. I gotta say. <laughs> that no, one how again, are you though, doing, Adam? After all of these. There's certain you elements that, you know, you need game. elements of truth, yeah. you know, otherwise it's just not effective <laughs> satire, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Let's see. That, oh, okay, well, okay. I I think that is Reddit. I'm, I'm going Reddit. I, I think that sounds like Reddit, too. That, I feel like that's a general insult that people use towards comedians, making fun of the bad gigs and that they don't mm-hmm. have. It's just a mm-hmm. dig that people... Mm-hmm. It does that sort feel, of tone. It does feel like that, but there's something in me that mm. I'm going to go with Joe. Mm. You're going with Joe. You're going Let's forget see. it. I'm just going to go with Joe. Okay. That one is from Reddit. Mm. Oh. Uh, two years ago, via a now deleted thread mm. uh, that I found by putting in Adam Carolla and ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say another ball sack. Reddit so, loves balls. So, uh, by the way, uh, Joe, our... Uh, our meme, our sacrilegious meme, which we can put up. <laughs> we can't talk about ball sex. That has gotten some some pretty good traction. It was like, I don't know, 280,000 views or something the last time I looked. Uh, I told Joe before we went in the studio when I was thinking about the guy from the Olympic oh. openings that had the nutsack hanging. Or it's controversial. Could be a tear in the pantyhose. Uh, oh, <laughs> By the way, <laughs> former military dad, when you're, you're like trying to explain yourself, oh like, son, gosh. you're nutsack. <laughs> dad, that was my pantyhose. <laughs> Either way, son, you're out. <laughs> um, I wrote uh, sack religious on there because it was uh, a big uh, nice. theme on there. Uh, simple. But uh, 200, how many views is it? 295.5K. Yeah. That's a good one. Wow. Yeah, that's a good one. Nice. Mm-hmm. You should post for the military. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> move over, like, Dwayne. Like, <laughs> they're going to bump butt funnel guy for you next time. Butt after funnel that. guy, yeah. move Coming over. For Dwayne, move over. There's a new sack sheriff in town. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a head like Charlie Kirk. <laughs> All right, but, uh, and baloney for brains, but here he comes. All right, so wait a minute. This next one should just be between Adam and mm-hmm. myself to see who the winner is, okay. and and we'll just have to pick opposite. All right. Otherwise, this will go on in perpetuity. Forever, yeah. <laughs> Do not follow your heart. Joe will no. have to start coming up with ones off the top of his head. <laughs> yeah. to... No, Adam, I will, I, will, I will let you pick first. Okay, all right. All right, here we go. Adam looks like a puffy... Alcohol bloated lesbian. Mm. Read it or mm. forget it. I don't know. I, I hear the lesbian insults a lot online, but that one sounds that one sounds made up to me. I'm I'm gonna go forget it on that one. Mm. You go forget I think, it. I think. Yeah. I think I would have gone with Reddit, e- even if I was choosing second and choosing opposite uh-huh. of you. All right. So I'll go. We'll see. I'll go Reddit. That one is indeed from Reddit. Yeah. Oh, you're the champion. Ah, the fact, winner. If you keep reading it, it says, Adam looks like a puffy, alcohol-bloated lesbian. Granted, a very happy and joyous one. Mm. Oh, if you would have said that, I would have said Reddit. No, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> that one's three years ago via internet meme. Mm. Mm. All right, we got an outro. That was Reddit or <laughs> Goodbye. Keep the hate coming. All right, let's give some plugs for Adam and Jessica. Adam's uh, short film, Biden's Long Lost Western featuring J.P. Sears. We can find that on oh, YouTube. Yeah. yeah, that one, uh, I did that one with the Babylon Bee. We took, uh, remember how Biden would always quote, he'd, he'd say this quote, you're a lying dog-faced pony soldier. Yep. And he claimed that it was from an old John Wayne Western, but nobody right. could find it. So right. we put all of Biden's nonsensical quotes into an old Western. So oh. That sketch, yeah. Well, that sounds yeah. funny. Yeah. Jessica's got, well, she's going to be coming up on Fallon. 
that'll be coming up August 14th. Mm -hmm. But you can go to uh, Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. Website, too. Why don't you guys give your websites out? Uh, mine's adamyenser.com. And then also, I'm going to be headlining uh, Pachanga Casino August 9th and 10th. And I'll be at TK's Comedy Club in Dallas the 22nd through 25th. Jessica? Um, I usually use Instagram. That's the best place to find me. It's Jay Keenan Comedy. I'm going to be over at uh, Kimmel's Club on August 8th, playing in front of 40 people. <laughs> uh, but two shows, so it'll be 2020. And uh, that'll be August 8th. And then at National Automobile Museum, I'll be doing shows there with Patrick Warburton. That'll be August 9th. And then everywhere else, Boise and Albany and uh, uh, everywhere. Just go to amcrow.com for all my live shows. Until next time, it's Adam. For Adam and Jessica, say it. Mahalo. <laughs>